One of the things that make the Sony a6300 so great for video are picture profiles. And what makes the picture profile so worthwhile are Sony's professional gamma curves, S-Log2 and S-Log3, that provide an extended dynamic range. Let me show you what that means. Access picture profiles from menu, tab 1, screen 5. Although, if you use them often, I'd assign them to the function menu. The nine provided profiles are samples, presets for the various settings. Press right to see and adjust the individual parameters, and by golly, there are lots of adjustments possible. Each varies the response of the sensor to light and color. It might take several lifetimes to evaluate all of the reasonable combinations. I'll resist making adjustments and stick to the samples. According to Sony, on their Help for Creators mini-site, Picture Profile 1 is designed for movies. Picture Profile 2 for stills. Yes, although picture profiles are designed for video, they work for stills too. Profile 3 provides natural colors in the ITU709 space. That's an international HD video display profile, usually called Rec709. It's the standard gamma and color setting employed on HD TV sets. Profile 4 provides faithful colors for Rec709. Profile 5 uses the Cine1 gamma, meant to emulate the responsiveness of film. Profile 6 uses Cine 2, an alternate film setting. Profile 7 uses S-Log 2, a Sony gamma response curve with an extended dynamic range. Profile 8 uses S-Log 3 with a Cine color setting. Profile 9, S-Log 3 with standard color setting. These last three are not designed to be used as is. Rather, they require post-processing using a video color correction tool. That's better. This is a DSC Lab Xylochart. It's a professional tool meant to measure the dynamic range, and this can measure up to 25 stops. From this end, each rectangle is one f-stop less than the one beside. In a dark room, I can make out about 18 rectangles, a dynamic range of 17 stops. So, and to set up this shot, I've used Zebra to configure the leftmost rectangle to 100%, with the ISO at 100, the shutter to 1 60th, aperture f9, although there is some blooming on the left rectangle. And with picture profiles turned off, there are seven, maybe eight rectangles visible. On a waveform, the brightest is slightly under 100 and only three at 50 or above. There may be 10 rectangles on the waveform, but the last three are essentially at black. Going through profiles one to six, there are some minor shifts, but at seven, the range expands to 11 or 12 rectangles. That's S-Log2 at work. It's worth noting that the ISO is forced to a minimum of 800 with S-Log2 and three. On to profile 8 and 9, S-Log3, 14, maybe 15 stops. Now back to the waveform for a minute. First, the black level is raised and visibly noisy, and white is about 80%, which provides the latitude to make further adjustments in post. That's impressive, and here's a real-life scenario to illustrate how you'd use that. Shooting a subject in front of an exterior window isn't recommended, but this is an example. Using profile 4 and closing the iris until the 100% zebra disappears, the sky is nicely exposed, but the tulips are too dark. Open the iris until the light meter is happy, but on to 6.3 where the tulips look properly exposed, and the sky is completely washed out. Changing to profile 7 increases the ISO, and the sky is still washed out. Using the waveform on the Shogun as a reference, Closing the iris to f14 provides what seems to be the right exposure. Now we grade, adjusting exposure and color in Final Cut, so we have a shot that provides an exposure range that, although it has less contrast, is a nicely exposed image. I've adjusted the S-Log manually, but this is often done using a lookup table or LUT. 
Final Cut has an S-Log2 LUT, but I'm not happy with the results, although it's entirely possible that the fault is in my exposure settings. That's partly because it's hard to visualize what S-Log footage will look like. It's typically washed out on the screen. The monitor on the A6300 has LUTs for S-Log 2 and 3. Menu tab 6 screen 1 has Gamma Display Assist, which converts S-Log to Rec. 709 for a display. I just leave it on auto. There's one more thing you need to know about the pretty much obsolete 8-bit Rec. 709. It's a 25-year-old standard created for tube TVs. It has, as you saw, about 7-8 stops of range. There's a new standard designed for 4K with a wider range and larger 10 or 12-bit color space called Rec. 2020. Displays and cameras with Rec. 2020 aren't quite mass market yet. So what's the takeaway? Let me recommend that, in general terms, Profile 3 or 4 are ideal for content to be viewed on a TV. If you're going for a cinematic look and shooting in 24 frames, 5 and 6 are interesting starting points. For the adventurous, reducing saturation and detail may increase the cinematic look for a scene. When would I use 7, 8 or 9? only when confronted with a wide dynamic range, as in the sample I showed, when sunlight and shadow can't easily be reconciled in one shot. For interiors, where all the light is reflected, it's really not necessary or even helpful. Make your adjustments with lighting and exposure instead. Martin, out. Except for one.